much, Professor Sun, for your wonderful uh, introduction. Um, the uh, title for my presentation is Research Trends on an Artificial Intelligence and Possible Contributions that Can Be Made by Anthropology, uh, which is uh, an important discipline. Uh, so, uh, let me uh, tell you about uh, what we are going to discuss today. Uh, I'm going to begin with the introduction, followed by literature review, and I'm going to also talk about the role of anthropology in the context of OMAI. Uh, and uh, with three uh, case studies, uh, and then I'll provide a concluding remarks. Let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jimmy No, and last year I received a master's degree in international aid and behavior studies uh, at Southern National University. And for about 10 years, I worked as an uh, international co instructor uh, in Germany, Australia, the United Kingdom, and France. Uh, so here's the introduction. The Google Demand Challenge Match uh, in 2016 uh, between Alpaco and Niceto changed the way how we approach and think about uh, old school and AI. Uh, since then, the event uh, affected some people, but not as much as that uh, for some others. So the question I would like to pose here is that how are we, the, how are these changes implemented by different people within the whole community, and what are their broader uh, implications? So the change and event, series of events, represents a significant achievement for computer scientists. And it's an opportunity for AI engineers, but for some people in the whole community, like the whole professionals and whole teachers, for them they are in a situation to accept the AI or just maintain, uh, maintain their uh, way, uh, you know. Uh, so, uh, moving on to the next uh, slide. Uh, so here's uh, uh, the research purposes. Uh, since the uh, emergence of AlphaGo, uh, the research on OM AI, uh, AI uh, have, uh, has become uh, diversified uh, compared to the past, which I will elaborate uh, in the next slide. The whole community is witnessing uh, post-human effects uh, with the introduction and uh, integration between O and AI, and it leads to a decrease in the power of human voices, uh, imagination, and creativity. Uh, so this is natural because there is more room for AI and then in relative tough terms, uh, uh, human roles are uh, decreasing. So there has been a lot of research on AI from various academic disciplines. Uh, but anthropology, although its potential, uh, has uh, contributed little uh, to the alcohol effect. Uh, that is uh, the motivation of my uh, presentation and I would like to respond to the three research questions. First, how has uh, the advent of AlphaGo affected the state of the research in both Go and AI? Secondly, what roles uh, could anthropology serve in, in uh, enriching this current discussion? Finally, how can anthropology contribute to the post-2016 world? Uh, so, <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, literature uh, review I just looked through uh, prior to 2016. I guess if you're a, uh, a computer scientist or mathematician, or you know uh, most everything, but I will briefly summarize it. Yeah, uh, what we are. So the first uh, computer bio program was uh, created by John uh, in uh, 1971, around that period. Uh, since then, uh, many researchers had tried to develop uh, Go programs, but they faced a lot of challenges, technical uh, you know, uh, challenges, and because Go has too many possibilities. So another group of the researchers uh, have uh, provided some possible solutions, like uh, in 2018, uh, Friedman uh, argued that the collaboration uh, between computer scientists, mathematicians, and go place is necessary. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, machine learning and multi color technique are discussed, were discussed as uh, uh, strong solutions uh, to beat human players, uh, as in the case of the 2016 match. 
So after 2016, a lot of things uh, uh, happened and uh, a lot of changes in academia as well. So Silver and Ho, uh, Silver and his colleagues, uh, or who demanded our uh, scientists, uh, uh, they made a breakthrough by, you know, uh, by developing AlphaGo, uh, AlphaGo Master, AlphaGo Zero, and Alpha Zero uh, within two or three years' time. Uh, and also, while studies uh, have made a contribution, uh, shortly after the uh, and the challenge, uh, Dr. Kim so Jin and Professor Jung Su Hyun uh, analyzed such peculiar uh, moves. Uh, from a sociological point of view, view uh, Binder argued that AlphaGo is not only about technical innovations uh, and its cultural phenomena and larger construction are also important. So he recognized the importance uh, over other disciplines. Yeah, computer science and mathematics are very important, but there's uh, also room uh, for other disciplines. So there's a multidisciplinary approach uh, conducted by Professor Evelyn Agi and uh, Kumanen uh, in 2020. So they investigated Alpha's mechanism and human possibility. So uh, like uh, discuss uh, discussion about uh, human possibility is uh, more like a philosophical question because uh, uh, basically they pose a question like how far human players become uh, can become stronger uh, than now. Uh, also E. Hajin, uh, as a co expert, she contributed uh, to the discussion by sharing her viewpoint mainly about uh, negative impacts of AI on all players. Uh, all players who teach children who want to become professional player. So according to her, the presence of AI uh, will replace uh, the teacher's role. So basically, it will affect uh, professional's income uh, negatively. Uh, so uh, let me move on to anthropology, uh, which is the main topic for this presentation. So anthropology is what is uh, everything affecting the world of human beings. So according to the renowned uh, anthropologist Yeltsin, uh, his defin uh, definition is that the aim of anthropology is the uh, enlargement of the universe of human discourse. Uh, so anthropology is a process of interpreting cultures using its own research methods, such as uh, ethnography. Uh, another anthropological technique is fieldwork. Uh, so it's a long-term, non-invasive systemic inquiry that seeks to gain an in-depth or send the understanding of a specific issue or topic uh, just uh, through uh, in-depth interviews. So anthropologists, uh, they choose a site uh, for research and by interacting with local people, uh, they will learn and understand and interpret their, uh, the local people's worldviews uh, by impl uh, employing a descriptive uh, form. So, why is anthropology important uh, in the context of ONAI? So that's because uh, uh, anthropology reflects uh, human voices and uh, experiences in detail, capturing changes uh, in the behaviors of the mindsets of uh, individuals uh, with diverse backgrounds. So from the first uh, presentation, we saw that yeah, maybe we shouldn't really believe AI is uh, uh, like uh, win rate. So we also have our human uh, human win rate. So I think this is a very good approach in my opinion, uh, like uh, from the perspective of human beings. Uh, so also anthropology helps us understand how various actors, like all professionals, uh, instructors, students, and casual players, how they uh, have responded to the alpha shock. Uh, in the last few years. But interviews can be biased, so such biases can also be reflected in anthropological work. Uh, this is not a necessarily bad thing, but I think anthropologists should be careful when formulating questions in order to avoid misinterpretations or misunderstandings. So I will uh, prepare three case studies uh, to show you some examples of anthropological uh, methods. So this study was conducted by O and his colleagues. So they conducted a semi-structured interview with 22 uh, people, uh, before, during, and after all the challenge match. So they explored the people's change in emotion. Uh, and their contribution is that 
uh, they capture the evolution in participants' uh, mindset on AlphaGo and AI through detailed uh, interviews. Uh, there are two limitations, though. As uh, the author submitted a language generalist ability, uh, which means that uh, they conducted with 22 Korean people, so it lacks uh, some international or global perspective of how uh, people from like many countries uh, think about this uh, AlphaGo event or the uh, event. Uh, secondly, temporal confinement. Uh, this uh, uh, research was conducted in a short period of time, so uh, meaning that only short-term perspective. So longitudinal or uh, long-term uh, research would have uh, captured a different, uh, more generalized uh, result uh, than this. Uh, so this is uh, how human narratives change over time. So before the match, so most people thought that uh, as we could, uh, as we were thinking, he said to the loser. But as more games were played, they changed their mind, uh, their mind slightly from disbelief. Oh, this cannot happen, and then uh, to pessimism. Okay, now he said the real loser. Okay, we have no chance. After game four, uh, they were extremely happy, saying that oh, it's a triumph uh, for humanity. And after game five, although he said the lost. Uh, yeah, uh, people phrased uh, Isedul's uh, quality. So, mostly Alpha's uh, description is like uh, creative, invincible, ruthless, or armed force. Yeah, so, uh, they also thought about some uh, future dangerous uh, threats uh, by AI. So, let's move to a second case study uh, by John. Uh, she conducted a research about how posthumans would teach and play go. So, she conducted in depth interviews with three minor professional players uh, who had more than 20 uh, years of go teaching experience. Uh, she tried to find uh, some features of posthuman go uh, pedagogy. Uh, <clears throat> So basically, according to our findings, uh, professional players uh, search for the best, uh, best way in a world without answers. So according to the anthropologists, uh, always a game with uh, infinite possibilities. So uh, no matter how, they, uh, how strong they are, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. So second finding is that professional players and their students learn from losing uh, in order to head toward the superhuman. Uh, second, they are very positive in order to become a post human by competing with the AI and learning. So, one positive aspect of AI is that it makes uh, human players uh, become stronger. Uh, so, I think uh, that's, uh, um, yeah, that's the findings. Uh, so, the contribution is that the uh, study provides insights uh, from three of experts. I uh, think it's uh, Han Zhong Jin uh, and uh, Mo Jin Sao. Uh, and then always the third person is different to remember, but yeah, I hope you remember come, uh, come up later. So on the influence of AI, so there's a limitation uh, because the scope is very narrow, uh, only focusing on three professional uh, players uh, rather than like a uh, uh, larger population, uh, ordinary players, uh, or maybe someone else. So uh, this is uh, the limitation, but uh, still uh, that's a very good uh, research. Uh, so, let's look at some narratives and anthropological interpretations. So, yeah, the third person is Joe Hansen. Uh, so, he said, I'm worried. I don't think I'll be helpful. I'm not experienced. I don't know much. So, what is your interpretation on this remark? Maybe some of you might think he's uh, just humble, modest. But the anthropology uh, thinks that uh, his remarks are sincere. She could say so after uh, months of uh, uh, research uh, because uh, all, uh, all has no answer, all has no, uh, you know, all has a lot of possibilities. So it's natural that even strong player like uh, Joe Hansen uh, doesn't know many things. Yeah, so that's uh, her uh, anthropologist's uh, observation. And uh, next, uh, Mok Jin Sao evaluated as a professional player in the uh, 20, uh, post 2016 period. He said, our value existence has become less clear. I think that's a fact. Uh, but we still remain as old professionals, uh, as there are those who find joy and passion in this. He admits that the human, like the valuable professional players, uh, is uh, decreasing because of the uh, presence of AI. But 
his uh, uh, answer is really insightful because he knows that the power of storytelling, that's something we still have. Uh, human players can uh, convey meanings beyond what AI can present. AI uh, can be a good player, better player than human uh, beings, but AI still has a limitation in explaining, uh, uh, explaining. And also, AI cannot just uh, share uh, you know, logics uh, behind their moves. So I think this is uh, the strength uh, we humans uh, have uh, compared to AI. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so the uh, anthropology uh, thinks that uh, the development of AlphaGo uh, can be an opportunity because it opens more horizon, uh, more possibilities uh, to understand uh, learn about the world, uh, go community, and so on. And uh, in order to do that, in order to develop more, I think anthropological work uh, yeah, can be really helpful. So this is the sort of case study I want to uh, Yeah, so this is uh, uh, the work uh, done by Moskowitz in 2013. So this is uh, the uh, ethnographic field work uh, from 2010 to 2011 uh, in Beijing at various uh, uh, sites. Uh, and then she con uh, he conducted in-depth interviews uh, with various actors like prophet, uh, pros, uh, university students, uh, or instructors, and ordinary players. Uh, the author argues that uh, Chinese nationalism and masculinities are embedded in the game of Weichi, uh, showing different forms uh, depending on people's statuses. Uh, the contribution is very clear. Um, <clears throat> as far as I understand, this is the first anthropology book entirely focusing on Go. Uh, it's rich in narratives uh, and offering this, uh, diverse perspectives from people uh, with uh, uh, different uh, social backgrounds. So this book uh, also includes uh, broader narratives uh, ranging from expert views and stereotypes and uh, biases. So uh, if you are not very familiar with this book, yeah, I strongly recommend this book. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's a very good book. Uh, <clears throat> and also there's uh, narratives uh, from some uh, respondents. <clears throat> uh, so some Chinese book players uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, take a go from nationalistic uh, standpoint. So they, uh, for their, uh, uh, from their perspective, go is a competition among China, Japan, and South Korea for national uh, pride, and it has something to do with uh, the history of imperialism and uh, economic status, uh, and also the worldview of uh, players playing go in the park. So for them, winning is not necessarily uh, their objective. So. Uh, According to the anthropologists, uh, they play Go in order to display, express their masculine, uh, masculinity. Uh, and also there's a lack of female presence, uh, yeah, saying that in the weight sphere, uh, men are the default uh, identity. But I think uh, uh, there's still room for some disagreement. Uh, yeah, if you see some uh, female players uh, just uh, play uh, and uh, play well and build a lot of activities. Uh, and uh, also, we can see some stereotypes over friends type by nation. So, according to some people, uh, in Japan, Weiji is an art, in China, Weiji is a sport, and a fight uh, in Korea. So, some people might uh, agree that some people in this room may disagree. Uh, so, <clears throat> let me summarize it. Uh, the case studies. Uh, they show human narratives. Uh, it were a uh, meanings uh, requiring careful uh, interpretations and analysis. So among them, the work by Moskowitz is the most orthodox uh, anthropology uh, research in terms of research duration, location, and the diversity of participants. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the other two works are, uh, you know, not as significant as that one because they also have uh, their own perspectives with more targeted uh, focus and with well-defined uh, objectives. So in my opinion, anthropological research on a whole community uh, can be uh, really helpful uh, in order to discover some lives, uh, change in their life in an increasingly AI-driven society. So I will prepare some questions for food for thought. Yes, yeah, so for example, uh, two people uh, mentioned so Joe Hansen said uh, our knowledge now is being challenged by AI and how should we interpret 
uh, you know, previous uh, human analytics uh, on ear rendering uh, move uh, some, something else, uh, like by uh, famous professional players. Uh, they have a lot of stories, uh, but they only give uh, numbers, uh, like minus 5, uh, plus 2. Uh, so this is uh, something uh, we might want to discuss. Uh, and also, if, uh, uh, we should also think about whether human uh, beings uh, can uh, create Josephis, uh, and also Josephis, uh, Josephis, and so on. Otherwise, uh, is it uh, AI's dominance uh, over uh, human uh, creativity? So, uh, let me conclude the, uh, the presentation. <clears throat> So this research, the research on OM AI is becoming more diverse and interdisciplinary, as we saw from the literature review. Second, anthropology has the potential uh, to enrich the current academic discourse by delivering some voices of diverse individuals uh, and interpreting changes over the last few years. So anthropology can provide insights into what the future will be like in the AI era uh, in alliance with other uh, academic disciplines. So I think uh, that brings to the end of my presentation. Now I welcome all the questions uh, and uh, comments. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nichimi, or Ochimi. And I think it's uh, good, uh, it's good to do some research.